This is part one of the instructions for Minilab entitled The Orbit of Mars. What we are doing here within this Minilab is we are doing a simplified version of Kepler's method to map out the elliptical orbit of Mars and to ultimately calculate its eccentricity. Okay, here are the beginnings of the directions. What you are to do first is take four blank pieces of paper, don't use notebook paper, use printer paper, and tape them together. Tape them together like so. <coughs> Like so, where we're going to say the long side of the paper here is in this direction. Okay, at the point of intersection of all four pieces of paper, we're going to say by definition that that's the location of the sun. So right here is the sun. Okay, the next thing to do is take a drawing compass, a compass such that you could draw circles. What you want to do is you want to draw a circle with a radius of 10 centimeters. This is going to represent the orbit of the Earth. It's going to be centered on the sun. Now the orbit of the Earth is an ellipse. However, the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit is pretty small. For all practical purposes, we can go ahead and simplify that the orbit of the Earth about the Sun traces out a circle. So right here, for example, is a circle with a radius of 10 centimeters to represent the Earth's orbit. Okay, so once again, the first thing to do is tape four pieces of paper together. Secondly, mark the sun, and then draw a 10 centimeter radius circle to represent the Earth's orbit. Okay, now, there is a longitude angle associated with the Earth when it orbits the Sun. This is referred to as the heliocentric longitude. By definition, zero degrees longitude is going to be this point right here on our paper. Right here is zero degrees. Mark it as such. Okay, now, on the first page of the mini lab exercise, you're going to see a table. The table that consists of eight pairs of dates. Within each pair, each of those dates are separated from each other by one sidereal period of Mars. In other words, from one date to the next, that then completely represents one orbital period of Mars. We need to use each pair to locate the position of Mars here on this graph. Let's take a look at the first of those pairs. In the first of those pairs, the two dates that are given are March 21st in 1931 and February 5th, 1933. Those two dates are exactly one sidereal period of Mars apart from each other. This then means that Mars was at the same position in its orbit on those two days. The first thing that we need to do is we need to locate where the Earth is on March 21st. Taking a look in this data table, you'll see that the heliocentric longitude of the Earth is 180 degrees. Here's then how we find that point. What you do is you take a protractor and you center it on the sun, like so. And then you have zero degrees correspond in this direction with zero degrees longitude. You then measure over 180 degrees away from that point, and you then find that point right here on the circle. And that's where the Earth was on that day of March 21st. Incidentally, you'll recognize the significance of March 21st as the vernal equinox. If you were standing on the Earth on that day, March 21st, and you looked at the sun in this direction, notice that you would see the sun towards zero degrees longitude. This is how we define zero degrees longitude when it comes to celestial coordinates. Okay, now next I need to locate the Earth on the next day of this pair, which is February 5th. We're going to assume that one degree on the orbital circle for the Earth corresponds to one day. Now, that's not quite the case. There are 360 degrees in a circle, and there are 365 days in a year. So right off the bat, there is a little bit of error here. Okay, and then the heliocentric longitude of the Earth on that day was 136 degrees. Here's how I find that point. What I have to do is take my protractor, once again, line it up here on the sun, and then what I have to do is measure over from zero degrees 136 degrees. That then looks to be about right there. 
and then I'll use a ruler, position it on the sun and on that point like so, and then I'll go ahead and locate the Earth here on that day. So right here is the location of the Earth on that day, February 5th, 1933. The next thing that I have to do for each day is locate the direction that Mars is in the sky as seen from the Earth. This is the next set of coordinates within the data table. This is the geocentric longitude of Mars. Take a look at March 21st. It says that the geocentric longitude is 118 degrees. Here's then how you find that. Once again, you take your protractor, but you don't center it on the sun. You now center it on the Earth on that day, March 21st, like so. And then what I have to do is measure over 118 degrees from there. So 118 degrees is roughly this direction like so. I'll then go ahead and take a ruler. I'll just use the edge of my protractor. And now what I do is I just draw a line in that direction from the Earth here on March 21st, like so. Mars is somewhere along that line. The way that we figure out exactly where it is along that line is to take a look at the next date in the pair, February 5th. On February 5th, the geocentric longitude of Mars on that day was 168 degrees. So then what you do is you take your protractor, center it on the Earth like so on February 5th, and then measure over from there, what was it, 168 degrees. That then is in this direction like so. I then draw a line in that direction from the Earth on February 5th, like so. And then boom, notice that the two lines intersect each other right here. That's where Mars was in, in its orbit on those two days. Those two days, once again, are exactly separated by one sidereal period. So what you have to do for the remaining seven pairs that are here in this data table is go through this process of locating the position of Mars for each of those pairs. We're doing here a simplified version of Kepler's method of mapping out the orbit of Mars. Essentially, Tycho's data consisted of the two types of longitude that were given here in this data table. There is a part two to, this, to these instructions. However, make sure that you complete part one of the instructions here prior to moving on.